All right. Enough fun. <laughs> Stephanie, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> Stephanie. That's funny. Did all of you could all of you see the screen? Welcome everybody. Hello everyone. How's everybody doing tonight, by the way? Tara. Hi Tara. How are you doing? And Joey and Stephanie, and I don't know what she's talking about. She put the big ups. Andrea, welcome tonight. Kelly. And there's Andrea. Uh, yeah, I'm laughing too, Andrea. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not going to read that, Stephanie. I'm not going to read it. I realize it's a mistake, so don't worry about that. But I'm wondering if everybody caught what was playing on the TV over there. Anybody know? Does anybody know what? Um, hi, Tara. How are you doing tonight? Uh, does that, uh, anybody know what that movie is right there? Can't see it. I don't know. Well, uh, maybe I'll tell you. If you couldn't tell, I'll tell you maybe at the end of the show. I hope everybody's doing well tonight. Um, it's Ice Station, Madeira Beach down here. Um, of course, compared to the rest of the United States, it's pretty warm. Uh, I actually had to turn the heat on in my apartment today. I couldn't take it any longer. So uh, it's snowing where my parents live in Pennsylvania. It's like negative minus three or something. Uh, it's crazy. It's absolutely crazy, uh, cold, but I think that uh, come the beginning of next week, it's going to warm up again, and hopefully that'll be the case for the rest of the United States as well. Um, what I'm wearing tonight, the rat, my uh, one of my Rat Pack is back. I have to, told you it's cold. I had to go to the sweatshirt. You can see it's long sleeve. And... Um, Oh, Stephanie, you'll figure out the movie. I have all the confidence in the world. Carletta, welcome tonight. Thanks for joining. Um, you know, once in a while it comes up maybe on the program, and some of you, maybe I've mentioned it in the group as well. Uh, when I used to live in Las Vegas, I used to be the um, stage manager for the show. Maybe some of you have been to Las Vegas and have seen the show. It was originally... Uh, at the Greek Owl building, which isn't even there anymore. They blew it up a few years ago. And then it went to the Plaza Hotel. I worked for it at the Greek Isle and uh, at the Plaza. And then from there, it went over to the Rio. And I'm not sure where it actually is now. It's still out there. But um, I used to work the show. It's called the Rat Pack is Back show. And it had uh, Rat Pack impersonators in it. And I have a bunch of Rat Pack is back shirts and things uh, from working the show. But I was a stage manager for, for that show uh, from 2005 to 2009. So that's the shirt that I'm wearing tonight. Hi, Diane. How are you doing? Stephanie says she doesn't trust her keyboard anymore. I can, Stephanie, I can see why. I can see, I can see why. That's pretty funny. But hello, everyone. Welcome tonight. Did everybody get their Powerball tickets? Everybody get them? I got two. Here's my two right here. It's up to $440 million. You might want to play now. It's worth playing now if you're in a state where you're allowed to play. So I got my tickets. I told you about my sweatshirt. Um, and it's cold here. It's just cold. So um, where do we want to go? Anybody can start? I didn't bring any questions to the show tonight. Um, so if anybody wants to ask me any questions about anything, anything we can talk about, um, just start typing away and I'll take them as they come up. Because once again, I didn't bring any questions uh, tonight with me. Uh, none were posted. So there you go. Dorothy, uh, welcome tonight. Hello from cold New Jersey. I was actually talking to somebody from New Jersey today, uh, Dorothy, and this guy said it was very cold there. Very, very cold. I was talking to a guy about a case uh, that we may eventually cover on Unfound. It's just hard to say uh, right at this second, but I was doing a couple, making some phone calls to the state of New Jersey. So maybe all of you want to check, take a look and see disappearances in New Jersey, see which one I'm um, checking out. But he said it was very cold, especially the, the business that this guy is in. 
So Dorothy, uh, welcome. Just get to the business stuff. Always want to remind you, you can go to Amazon.com. Continue to get a lot of uh, positive responses to not just the content of the book, the volume one, but the quality of it. Looks great. Looks great. Uh, last week, I um, think I might have told you that I met uh, one of the guests, uh, Lee Clifton. And, uh, I gave her a book uh, because she was a guest, and then I gave her another book to give to uh, Kelly Rothwell's mother. And uh, Lee was very impressed with the quality, high quality of these books. They look really good. So check them out on Amazon.com in paper book, paperback or ebook form. So there's that. And then, of course, the playing cards. I have them right here. I keep showing them to you. There you go. And we got random, random um, Suzanne Lau. Mary, thanks for joining tonight. Here we go. Claudia Wells. Crystal Morrison. So you can check those out. You can go to makeplayingcards.com. And you can check those out right there. Makeplayingcards.com. Just do a search for Unfound and you will find them there. Uh, maybe some of you also saw that um, we're finally working on some T-shirts. They're going to have the Unfound logo with a red background on the front. And then just like the playing cards on the back, it's going to be the picture of a person who is missing, a case that Unfound is covered. And it's going to have their information, their name, the city they disappeared from, the date, and the phone number to call if somebody knows anything about the case. I'm going to be working on that. I have a sample ordered for me uh, that shipped out today. Hopefully it'll be here Friday or Saturday. I'll get to check it out and see what my work looks like. In the meantime, I will start working on putting all those shirts together. As you can imagine, uh, it's going to be a lot of choices. It'll be up to you. You know, I'm guessing maybe you want to pick one that uh, a case that you found most compelling or maybe one that was in your area. It'll be up to you. So they will all eventually be all available on T-Launch. Um, and I'm doing this shoot through Shopify is how I'm doing that. I'm designing them online just like I did the uh, playing cards. And if you don't, I mean, if, if you're new to the show, you're new to listening to Unfound, or maybe you're new to watching this uh, live show, um, I do the designs for everything. The only design I didn't do actually is was the logo for the show, which was done by Stephanie. And you can see her right there uh, in the comments section. Stephanie, uh, uh, really, really, really uh, brought that logo together, and I cannot thank her for, for enough. She's also done some transcription work on the book, but designing the book covers, designing the playing cards, and um, designing the shirts, all done by me when I'm not working on the show, when I'm not uh, talking to people on the phone and getting the show ready for every Friday and that. Uh, that's what takes up my other time. Uh, designing these things. I just finished designing the cover of volume three, so I'm kind of working ahead there. So Stephanie with a smiley face, you're welcome, Stephanie. And Becca, I see you. Becca, how are you doing tonight? How are you doing? I hope everybody's doing well. <clears throat> so we got the book, we got the playing cards. Um, the t-shirts are probably, <clears throat> probably going to be available within a couple weeks as long as the sample that's sent to me looks good. I'm just worried about how the pictures that I have are going to be blown up. Just don't know how that's going to look right at the second, second. And I will know that once they send me a sample and I can see, and I'm going to use the sample that I posted in the group, um, the picture of Jesse Foster. So that's going to be the sample shirt. Um, and we'll see how it looks. And if it looks good, then I'll, I'll know that the rest of the uh, T-shirts are going to look good as well. And then we'll just go from there. But I will I'll be working on that uh, this weekend. If you don't know, this past weekend, you might find this interesting. On Saturday, I spent about over eight hours on the phone uh, interviewing people for upcoming programs, including the one for this Friday, the disappearance of Aaron Barnard. Uh, I did the interview for him. I did the interview for next Friday, 
Then I also did the interview for the Friday after that. And then today I also did the interview for the Friday after that. So all of January is now covered. I can't believe it. That's the first time that's ever happened. Um, a lot of interesting cases. Uh, we're starting off this year, and I'm going to talk about this um, this episode, uh, this week's episode later in the uh, program. You're doing good, Becca. That's that's good to hear. I want to remind all of you again, please, if you um, have any questions for me, you want to start a conversation in here, uh, please ask me a question, please. Um, Lee, welcome tonight. Anne, how are you doing? See, so, yeah, Andrew, so I can take a break. I guess you're talking to me, so you can take a break. Uh, I, I'm guessing, Andrew, that you're talking to me. I don't get much of a break. If it's not working on the show, I'm working on something concerning the show. And I had the opportunity this past weekend to get those. I was ready to do those interviews. The people, the guests uh, were ready to do those uh, interviews. So we did them. We got them done. And I, th I think they all came out really good. And you're doing okay? Great. Um, some other things. Uh, volume 2, still working on it. Still working on it, just the way it goes. Uh, volume 2, you've seen the cover. I think I've already posted that in the group. Maybe I should do that again to remind people. I should probably work on the page on Amazon for that as well. It's going to be also an ebook and paperback form. And then I have had some uh, generous PayPal and Patreon um, contributors within the last week, and I'm going to, of course, mention them on Friday's episode as well. If you'd like to contribute to the show, just go to PayPal. You can use the email address unfoundpodcast at gmail.com. That's how you'd find the account. And then for Patreon, patreon.com forward slash unfoundpodcast. You can start donating at $2 a month and deeply appreciate it. Um... Is it easy? Diane asked me, "Is it easier to get inter interviews now um, compared to a year ago?" Yes, yes, um, definitely compared to a year ago, and I would say it's even easier than six months ago. Um, it, it seems to me that um, you know, I guess the the people that myself, Emily, and a couple other people who help me contact people, I think it. I think it is the more people are being more responsive. I guess the word is spreading around. I guess part of it also is that the missing persons community is very tight. In fact, I didn't even find out until I'd already done the interview that April Vordren, who was the interview for this past Friday for Patricia Taylor's case, uh, uh, Patricia's sister April, who was the guest for that episode, she knows Laureen Bible who, of course, her daughter disappeared along with Ashley Freeman in Oklahoma. They, I think they go to the same church. And April didn't even find out until Patricia's episode had been posted that Lorraine had been on the program before. It's, it's, I was really stunned at that. So there's a lot of networking now that's done. And uh, people just know other people. And I, I, it, it's happening all the time now that I will talk to somebody and it'll turn out that they'll know somebody and then they'll know somebody and sometimes it's somebody who's already been on the program. So um, I, I would the, the easy answer is yes, Diane, it is getting easier and I'm just giving you uh, a few reasons why. And I think that also more people know about the program. We're getting more and more downloads every week. Word is spreading. That all mixed together has made getting interviews, I guess, easier because it was not easy at the beginning. When I started and Mary Lau was my first interview and Kelly Murphy was my second interview, I think it helped that those people were so prominent in the missing persons community that they came on. Um, I think that if I would have um, contacted um, just parents who weren't as involved as Mary and Kelly are, probably wouldn't have got those types of people on. But now they, they do come on, I think. Um, so yes, it, it, it has gotten a lot easier and thank you for asking. And I guess an indication of that is, is being able to do all those interviews in one day. Sure. Um, Kara, welcome. Welcome tonight, Bobby. Good to see you. I hope you're doing uh, well, Bobby up there in Virginia. Uh, yes, Andrew. Yes, it is tight. Integrity for everything. Yes. Thanks. 
Um, Stephanie, why would a missing person family say they're desperate for help in the media and not respond to podcasters like yourself who, who contact them? Um, you know, Stephanie, uh, yeah, I think part of it is that, you know, and I know there are other programs that do interviews kind of like the vanished, you know, Marissa, she does interviews as well with family members. Um, you know, I, I ask a lot of questions, you know, I think that, um, you know, I try to really, really be specific and, you know, on top of that, uh, people aren't used to being interviewed. People aren't used to being interviewed. And when I say, well, you know, they may listen to a couple episodes and see that an interview goes like 90 minutes. You know, some people aren't ready for that. Some people aren't uh, emotionally ready for that. And, you know, and what maybe the listeners don't realize is that uh, the interviews take a lot longer than you hear on the episode. A lot of times because uh, my guests do have to take sometimes some minutes to collect themselves. You don't realize that because I edit that that part out. But, um, you know, uh, it's I'm going to say, I, I don't know if this is good or bad or whatever, but, um, you know, talking to me and the way that I ask questions and everything can sometimes, you know, make it like the disappearance is happening all over again. You know, um, but don't get me wrong. All of my guests, I get along with all of my guests. Every single one of them. I could call any of them on the phone uh, right now. They've all become very good friends of mine and everything. But, um, you know, I like to be very thorough. And people aren't used to being interviewed like the way I do interviews. And I don't hold that against. If somebody doesn't want to be on the program, I don't hold it against them. I, I, I've never done that ever. And I never will do that. Um, because I, I, I don't know what it's like to be in their shoes, um, but I'm just here to help. And some people, when they want help, maybe they just want to be interviewed for 10 minutes and just get something in the local paper. If, if that's all they want to do, it's totally up to them. It's totally, I make no judgment there. So, um, you know, I, I don't know if there's, uh, you know, an easy answer to that stuff. Everybody... Uh, handles things in their own way. They grieve in different ways. So um, I don't know. Uh, but I, but once again, I think that every guest that has been on the program uh, had a, has had a good experience, and they know that I continue to talk. You know, work with them afterwards, even after the episodes comes out. And I think that goes back to what Diane asked: is getting interviews easier now? Yes. Um, because of that, and they realize that I'm not just, you know, uh, doing some, you know, hit and run piece. We talk about it for 10 minutes and I move on. Some people really do want to get into the details. Somebody, some people really do want to name suspects and, you know, all that. And, um, we do that on unfound. I give them an opportunity and as they know, and maybe the listeners and they are completely in control of the information. It's not like I demand that we have to talk about things. I send them an outline after initial conversation. They are the ones who are in control of the information of what they want to talk about. Um, and sometimes we add things to the outline and sometimes we take things out. It just depends. Um, but the information is always totally in their hands. So, um, and another thing is a lot of people don't know what podcasting is, Stephanie. Still, in the year 2018 now, and I hope everybody had a beautiful New Year's. Um, a lot of people still don't know what podcasting is. Uh, I, I once in a while, is, so is this show on the radio? You know, a lot of people just don't know. So um, that may be it. Who who is this guy? I've never heard of him. I still get that once in a while, but uh, getting interviews, getting guests, you know, talking to people, them responding, has gotten a lot easier. Yes. So that's a long-winded answer, Ed. Really long-winded. Hope I answered your question, uh, Stephanie. Uh, Bobby, still fighting for dad. I hear you, Bobby. I hear you. I hear you. And uh, anytime uh, you want to talk about anything, you, you know how to reach me, you know, whether through Facebook. And uh, I'm hoping you have my number saved in your phone. 
I think I know I have your number saved in my phone. So anytime, Bobby, you want to talk, uh, I'm always here. Uh, missing persons news. Um, I'm going to go through the top 10. Uh, I don't know. I posted this in the group, but maybe some of you missed it. You might find this interesting. Uh, the top 10 places with the most disappearances per 100,000 people. Okay, so we know that California is the most populous state, so it's going to have the most missing people. But this is per 100,000 people. So I'm going to go down the list and just make a couple comments as we go. Maybe um, some of you will find this interesting. Uh, I know I did. And, and maybe you might even be surprised to see what is number one. And, in fact, we've covered one disappearance in that state already. Uh, number 10 is Arkansas. Not a surprise to me. If you go back and look at all the cases that Unfound has done, we've done quite a few disappearances from Arkansas. In fact, after Florida, I think Arkansas might be number two. I'll have to check that. But we've done quite a few. Uh, from there, people from that state seem to be easy to reach and ready to talk. I think of Ronnie Russell. I think of Clea Hall. I think of, um, wow, I'm going to blank on her name. I'm going to check this real quick for a second. Um, I hate doing this. Where is it? Hold on for just a second, folks. Um, Arkansas, where is it? We also have Pamela Golden. That was the one I was thinking of. Pamela Golden from Arkansas as well. And I think we had at least one other one. So have quite a few. But Arkansas is number 10 per 100,000 people. Um, number nine, Hawaii. Have not done a Hawaii case. Uh, maybe some of you are surprised by that. Uh, Hawaii. Number eight, Wyoming. Haven't done any Wyoming ca cases yet either. Jill, welcome tonight. Thank you for Thanks for tuning in. Uh, so Wyoming is number eight per 100,000 people. Number seven, Montana. Have we done a Montana case yet? No, we haven't done a Montana case yet. Um, number six, Idaho. That's convenient. We've already done one uh, missing person there, Patrick Beavers. But this week and next week, we're doing disappearances from Idaho. This week is Aaron Barnard, disappeared from Bo Boise, Idaho, 2004. We're going to do another Boise, Idaho disappearance next week. So that'll be three from the state of Idaho. So maybe I shouldn't be surprised that Idaho's on the list. Um, number five, my former home state, where I used to live, Nevada. Of course, we've already done Jesse Foster there. We've done Chris Turner uh, missing from Nevada. Chris Turner and his mother, Dawn Turner, was uh, the interview for that episode. And she's uh, I just talked to her recently. As I talked to her. Did I talk to her within the last week? Yeah, I think I did. I talked to her within the last week on the phone or maybe the last 10 days. But so we've got, done a couple Nevada cases. Number four is the state of Washington. Washington. Have we done a Washington disappearance yet. I know I've been trying to do a disappearance from Washington. Um, I didn't I have to look, I didn't look any of the cases up uh, that I've done beforehand. We've done almost 60 now. Woohoo for Idaho. DD, how are you doing tonight? Uh, this shouldn't be uh, woohoo for Idaho. Well, I, you're going to hear Idaho this Friday and next Friday. But number four is Washington. Number three is Oregon, which is surprising to me. Oregon feels like such a placid, laid-back state, that it would be number three in per 100,000 people. Number two, Arizona. Of course, we just did a case uh, from Arizona, Kingman, Arizona, with Tyler Stice and his um, sister Jessica was the interview. So number two is Arizona. I don't know if that's a surprise or not. Um, you notice that, it, you know, it's weird that Arizona, Oregon, Washington, Nevada, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, all kind of those western states. I don't know what to make of that. 
I have to think about that. I don't know why that would be so many in the western United States. Arkansas is really the only one in the eastern United States. That's very interesting. I just noticed that now. There you go. <laughs> Jill, woohoo, Arizona, yeah. So Arizona is number two. And number one, um, it's a state that we've visited once already. I don't know if we will get a chance to do that again or not. We'll just have to see. But number one, uh, anybody want to guess? Yeah, Jill, maybe it is the Wild West or the unknown is still possible. Yeah, maybe. Um, that's very well. Could be, It might have something to do with, you know, it's not as uh, urban-like in the West. That could have something to do with it. I'll have to think about that. Um, but do you, any, does anybody know? Um, hello, Preston. How are you doing? Um, does anybody know what the number one state is? What is the number one state per 100,000 people? There it is. Joey gets it. Alaska. That's right. And in fact, when I discovered that, um, I let my friend Ariel Jane from Murder Under the Midnight Sun know about that. I don't know if she's included that in a recent show or not, but I got a kick out of that, and I wanted to make sure that she saw that. So, um, no, Andrew, it was not California, and Illinois might be a good choice too. Um, but no, uh, it's Alaska per one per one hundred thousand people, and that Jill, that might be a buy into what you were saying, kind of the Wild West, and uh, you can't get much wilder in the United States than Alaska, all the frozen tundra up there. So that might have something to do with it. Oh, Bobby Preston's your brother. Very good, Preston. Nice to meet you. Thanks, thanks for tuning in tonight. So once again, number ten, Arkansas, then Hawaii, Wyoming, Montana, Idaho, Nevada. Washington, Oregon, Arizona, and number one is Alaska. So there you go. Yeah, Sarah, all states with wide open spaces, easy to hide bodies. If murdered, that's a possibility too. That's a, I, yeah, I agree with you. I, I agree with you. I wonder if the age of the population has something to do with it as well. A lot of these states, uh, their average age is a younger uh, population, and I think. Pretty much the younger you are, the more likely that you are to disappear. So I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. Well, uh, I just, I'll have to sit down and probably think about this at some point, why it's those particular states. But you may be right, the wide open spaces. And I'm sure right about now, uh, what's that guy's name? David Polites, the guy that does all the national parks stuff. And I'm sure he looks at this list and... Uh, gets a kick out of it as well. So there you go. That's the top 10 states for disappearances. Uh, Jill, I have an idea about Arizona, and it's not PC. Um, yeah, okay. Um, I don't know if you want to type it out, but um, everybody's going to have their uh, ideas and opinions on that. Andrea, drugs with young people, wooded areas, and deserts? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's part of it why young people do disappear more than older people do. You know, I think that a lot of people between the ages of 20 and 30 disappear than the age of, between the ages of 60 and 70, uh, I think. So you get a state with an older population, like Pennsylvania, Florida, they're not in the top 10. Either is New York, Illinois has an older population, some of the other... Uh, uh, northeastern, northeastern states, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, uh, older populations in those areas, they're not on the list. All of these kind of younger states or young people with younger pe states with younger people in them could be something. In fact, I know when I lived in Nevada, I think it, I think the Nevada has the fifth youngest average for population, something like that, at least when I was there. So let's move on to another piece of news, and this has something to do with actually a case I just mentioned uh, a little bit before, and it was in the news again, is did any of you see this um, article that came out of Oklahoma about how the sheriff in the Lara Bible and Ashley Freeman disappearance, of course that's a disappearance we covered back in September. I had Laureen 
uh, Laura's mother on the program. Did you see that the sheriff allegedly found uh, like a box of notes? They were, I guess they were moving offices or something. And he found all of these notes, all of this stuff that I don't know if it had been lost or misplaced or, or whatever else um, while he was moving. They're moving offices, found a bunch of notes for, regarding this case um, that uh, maybe they had forgotten about them. I, I think that that had been posted in the Unfound Podcast discussion group. I just wonder how many of you saw that. Um, and that news came out about a week ago. And maybe I need to remind you that Laura and Ashley disappeared on December 29th, 1999. So it's over 18 years ago now. Um, I, I don't, I have to tell you, I've not talked to Laureen. I sent her a message on Facebook. Uh, she's not gotten back to me. She has, she has no reason to get back to me if she doesn't want to. I'm sure since this, this, uh, story got out. It's been everywhere. In fact, I saw it on, um, on a couple British media sites. So that's, you know, it's news that's kind of made it, I guess, around the world. I'm sure she's getting inundated with phone calls and things. And I'm not going, I sent her one message. I'm not going to bother too much. Maybe I'll catch her some doubt where down the road, but right now I don't know any more than you do. I, I don't, uh, I don't know any more about what, uh, what the truth is with this, what happened, than any of you who have read anything out there. Um, and if I find out any more, and if it's Laureen who tells me and she says I'm allowed to say, then I will gladly pass you know, anything uh, that I learn on to the rest of you. What makes, I have to say though, um, what makes me a little, I don't know, something that I'm going to have to think about is the news of this coming out right at the time when the anniversary of the disappearance is. I don't know what to make of it. Is it just a coincidence that the sheriff found these notes right around the anniversary? I don't know. You know, it, it um, you know, it, you know, I'm trying to determine if this is real news. I'm not saying it's fake news. I'm just wondering if this happened maybe a couple months ago and it just didn't get out to the anniversary. They figured, well, we'll just wait and publicize this on the anniversary. I don't know. It just seems a little too coincidental that this story that the sheriff just suddenly found this box of notes right around the time of the anniversary. I'm not sure what to make of that. If I have any insights into it, if I find out anything, uh, all of you will be the first to know. Um, I don't know if this is going to spark new interest in the case. I really don't know what to make of it. I, I'm not sure. You know, what I can't determine right now is, you know, are these notes that were forgotten? Are they going to really break the case open? What are they doing the investigation? And these things got pushed aside. And now it's, I don't know. I just, I just, if I knew, I would tell you. I just don't know. Um, of course, any publicity is good publicity uh, for this case. Um, I believe that Laura and Ashley were taken. I do not believe that they died in that fire. Um, and I happen to believe that uh, a couple of those serial killers that have been mentioned are not related, you know, in any are connected in any way to their disappearances. And I have to tell you, there is a part of me that still believes that Whoever went to that house um, might have actually been going after the girls and not after the parents. I'm not sure it had anything to do with Ashley's dad or her mother at all. I, I, I you know, it's been what since one, two, three, you know, three months at least since we covered that case, and that's still my opinion. So, you know, if anybody wants to chime in what they think, maybe you've heard about this. Uh, please write it in the comments section. And once again, if you have any questions um, that you want to ask me tonight, uh, please do. Um, we're, you know, I, once again, I haven't brought any questions. I have a couple questions so far. Please, uh, I don't care if you've already asked me a question, anything. You want to talk about whatever, whatever. And uh, anybody still have a guess? Guess what that movie is right there. It's hard to see. There it is. It's still playing there. It's hard to see. 
But I had, if, if some of you got in here late, I was playing that movie um, before the, pro sh the, the show started, and I wanted to see if anybody knew what that movie is. It's one of my favorite uh, movies. I wouldn't say necessarily in my top ten, but I have it on DVD, um, and it reminds me of being a kid in the 1980s. So any questions, anything like that? No. Wow, you guys are quiet tonight. The, the uh, typing, the opining has uh, uh, slowed down a bit. Um, that's fine. I'll just keep going through my notes. Um, this week's case is the disappearance of – I don't know what to make of that. Um, this week's case is the disappearance of Aaron Benjamin Barnard. His mother calls him Benji, uh, I guess short for his middle name, Benjamin. Um, this is a case that I've actually known about for a while, uh, even before I started Unfound. And it's probably a case you've heard of too. And it is easily, I'm not going to say it's the most complex case, but it's easily one of the most complex cases that Unfound has covered. It's complex. I wouldn't say necessarily that the facts are complex. I wouldn't say it's complex in the way that Evelyn Hartley's disappearance is complex. Um, with all these you know, facts and the blood and how did the person get into the house in, in that particular case that we did about a month ago. This one is complex is because there's so many different suspects. Um, it's, I get the idea that Aaron was a good guy, but he was surrounded by a lot of shady people. And he had done some things that might have, people might have held grudges against him. Um, it, you know, you're going to have a lot of people to consider. And we go, and he and his mother, his mother Vicky, who I've gotten to know very, very well, really, really like Vicky, really. And she lives in Oregon. Um, you know, you're going to ask be asked to consider the roommate, the ex-lover, the bike, the motorcycle mechanic. The childhood friend, the gun maker, the pawn shop owner, it's almost, and I'm not to draw and put any humor or anything, but it's almost like a game of Clue where you have, you know, the professor and, you know, all those different people. I haven't played that game for years and years and years, but it reminds me a lot of that because um, it seems at one time or another, one of these people had said something bad about um, Aaron had made a comment about him, um, whether it's before he disappeared or after he disappeared. And so there, there's that part of it. And uh, Aaron was an entrepreneur. He was into various businesses. Um, he has an ex, he has, a, 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 um, I think it's two ex-wives, and he had a, a child by each of them. And you're going to be asked to, of course, consider not maybe the first ex-wife, but the, the, the second ex-wife, if she might have had something to do with his disappearance. Because the facts are very simple, that he was out, he got called to come home, he went home, and he allegedly went home, and he disappeared. Those are the facts. And then everything that happened afterwards, and a lot of things his mother found out. And uh, But on top of that, and by the way, we're calling this episode cause and effect because you know we, we deal so much with cause and effect in missing persons we know what the effect is the effect is the disappearance but then we're always trying to find out why which is otherwise known as the cause but the reason it's called cause and effect is because um, there's another part of this besides just figuring out trying to figure out what happened in Aaron Barnard's case uh, and, the, you know, the causes, the cause or causes for his disappearance. It very well could be that his effect, his disappearance, could be the cause in another disappearance that happened a couple years later. And what you're going to get to hear, and I've mentioned we're talking Boise, Idaho this, Boise, Idaho this week, in Boise, Idaho, Idaho next week. Next week, we're going to be doing the disappearance of the other guy who disappeared in Boise, Idaho a couple years after Aaron did. 
because you know, well, how do I want to set this up? I don't want to give too much away about next week's case, but this will give you, you know, for all of you who are, there's not many of you, but those of you who are watching, you'll get to know this uh, while you're watch or while you're listening to this week's case. Uh, there was a case that was covered on the show Disappeared, the disappearance of Jeremy Burt. He disappeared in Boise, Idaho. He disappeared a couple years after Aaron Barnard. Well, the fact is that Aaron and Jeremy knew each other. I wouldn't say they were best friends or anything, but they had gone to a wedding together, not as a couple, but their girlfriends were best friends. Aaron disappears in 2004. Jeremy disappears a couple years later. And if you've seen that disappeared episode, they talk about his girlfriend. Well, that girlfriend that is mentioned in there, uh, a woman who was in jail at one point, was the best friend of the woman that Aaron was dating. Not long. He wasn't dating her when he disappeared, but not long before he disappeared. So this week we're covering Aaron's case. Next week we're covering Jeremy's case. And after that, I'm going to ask you to determine if these two cases are related or not. Is it just a coincidence that these two guys knew each other. And because it could be that Aaron's disappearance in 2004, not just being the effect, the cause, whatever was his dis the reason for his disappearance, the cause, and then the effect being his disappearance, did his disappearance then become a cause that caused Jeremy to disappear? Um, and we're doing it two weeks in a row, and this is how we're starting off 2018, and this is how I wanted to start it off. Uh, I thought this would be a good uh, way to start the year. Two cases that are interlinked because I have to tell you, both in Aaron's case and Jeremy's case, my opinion, they're two of the most solvable cases that Unfound uh, has covered. Not that I know they're complex. You have a lot of suspects and everything, but I think once you hear Aaron's about Aaron's disappearance, and as usually the case, when we do Jeremy's disappearance next week, we go into way more detail than disappeared did, as always. Um, all of you are going to have a lot to think about, a lot more. I and I've already done the interview for Jeremy's case. A lot to think about. So um, I'll be interested to hear what you think. I'm sure Vicki, um, Aaron's mother, will be interested to hear what all of you have to think. Um, I'm not going to give away who the guest is for Jeremy's in, uh, episode, but I'm sure she'll be interested to hear what all of you think. And uh, you know, and maybe we'll take a poll or something like that to see uh, on the, in the group or out on the regular Facebook page as to all, what all of you think. So this week's episode, The Disappearance of Aaron Benjamin Barnard, who disappeared in December 2004. Wait, yes, December 2004, and in Boise, Idaho, one of the states that was on the top 10 of, K of states where disappearances occur. And then next week will be... Uh, another Boise, Idaho disappearance, and I haven't come up with the title for that one yet. But this one is called Cause and Effect. And then like every episode I talk, I open up the uh, episode talking about the principle of cause and effect because I like to pretend I'm a philosopher. So I don't have anything else. Uh, I'm hoping that everybody's still out there. haven't seen a lot of comments or anything um, coming in. Maybe all of you are just chilling out and just watching me, which is perfectly fine. Um, or maybe my thing is just not working. I don't, I'm not sure. But um, if nobody has anything else, let me just check these comments for a second. Hold on a second. See, now I see the comments piling up. Let me see something. Here, I think the camera's still working as I do this. Let me do this. 
is not very uh, interesting, Ed. They, they don't like you um, <laughs> working on your computer uh, while you're doing this. Let me just see uh, what's going on here. Okay, so see, I'm seeing these. I don't know why it does that. Sarah, okay, now see, I'm seeing this now. These comments, why are they not making it onto the um, discussion? That's weird. I don't see them over here. That's very strange. I'm going to have to figure that out. It seems at some point the question the comments stop coming up uh, Sarah asked me have any of your people been found no they haven't uh, sorry to say no they haven't Sarah um, we've made a lot of good progress on um, quite a few cases I'd say in about a third of the cases Sarah um, we have uh, made progress we've de made definite definite progress um, but no um, solutions yet. Sorry to say. It's, um, you know, just going to keep working at it. Uh, I think that we keep working at it. Some of these cases are going to get solved. Um, has anyone come to you with useful information in your cases? Jill, after the fact, yes. Yes, sometimes months later. Sometimes months later. Uh, I can cite the Donnie Smatlack um, case as a perfect example. We did it back in November, and a guy came forward this past June, in June of two. I did that case in November 2016. Somebody came forward and to me in June 2017 with new information. So, yeah, we, I do get, uh, definitely get um, useful information, absolutely, um, once in a while. Sometimes just takes some time, unfortunately. Um, and uh, we just try to do the best we can. I think we're as thorough as any um, we're as thorough as any show out there. I think I'm as thorough as inter any interviewer out there. I love to be thorough. I want to get the facts out, and I think you hear a lot of facts on relevant facts on Unfound that you won't hear anywhere else. And, um, you know, that's, um, that's what I'm trying to do. Just what I'm trying to do. I am going to have to figure out why at some point this, they stopped seeing comments over here on the right side of my screen. I'm going to have to figure that out. But with that, I'm going to go. Um, just going to have to figure that out. That bothers me going to bother me now. So um, thank you for all joining me tonight. And uh, you will hear me on Friday for the disappearance of Aaron Barnard. Episode's called Cause and Effect. I urge you to go to Amazon, check out the books, go to Patreon, PayPal, support the show. Got the playing cards at makeplayingcards.com. Do a search for Unfound. Um, go to unfoundpodcast.com if you haven't checked out the secret episode yet. And I will see you all. You will hear me on Friday. And then we'll do this all again next week. I have to tell you, this is always my favorite time of the week, talking to all of you, answering your questions and everything else. So I hope you all have a very warm night, a warm rest of the week. I hope the United States gets a little warmer uh, very soon. So good night and thanks for watching.